Hey, it's Nathan with CrazyOnMarketing.com. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up standard campaigns as well as split test campaigns within Active Campaign. Now, a campaign is basically a one-off email. So you're sending an email because you have a sale going on, or maybe you wrote a new blog post that you wanna share with your subscribers. But emails like that that are timely versus an automation that is a series of emails. So anyway, to get to a campaign, we just come over here to Campaigns. And then we'll go ahead and click on create your first campaign. And so there's several different types. We have the standard and split testing, which we'll talk about in this video. There's also automated, which you know is an automation. There's RSS triggered, autoresponder, and date based. And now these four bottom options are also able to be set up within the automations area. And I prefer to set them up as automation. So I have all my automations in one section within Active Campaign, and then all of my campaigns in a whole other section. So it helps me stay organized to keep them separated. So I'll have other other videos on automations and RSS triggered and autoresponders and date based automation. So check out my channel if you're interested in that. In this video, we're just talking about standard campaigns and then split testing. So let's go ahead and start with the standard campaign and you can go ahead and give it a name right here. So demo campaign. And then I'll go ahead and click on next right here. And Active Campaign is yelling at me because of my DMARC settings. And that's because my from email address is not correct. So let me go ahead and change that real quick. I already got rid of that error message because I'm using the correct email address now. And so you can go ahead and add your subject line, self-explanatory stuff right there. They do have a little emoji button as well. So if you wanna include an emoji in your subject line, you could go ahead and do that too. And there's also this lightning bolt option right here. And this will let you add a personalization tag. So you could go ahead and select the field. So if you wanted to include like someone's first name, you could go ahead and click on save. So then they'll give you the personalization tag right there. So then in your subject line, you could include, you know, the person's first name and that might increase your open rates or something to that effect. So there's my subject line. And then I could also add a pre-header. And so this is the next bit of text that somebody will see when they're previewing the message. So they'd see that subject line and then they'd see the pre-header. So this is kind of like the next chance you have to get somebody to open and read your email. So you wanna make sure that's intriguing and gets people to actually open your email and read the thing. And then you can go ahead and type in your from name. So, you know, your, your name, or maybe you wanna include your company as well. So that way people might recognize who you are and then of course you have your from email address as well so i have that email address but you could also set up a reply to address as well so you could have your from email address be like from your domain name and then your reply to address could be to like a support ticketing system so maybe you have a large email list and you have people sending replies and stuff like that you could have those replies go into like a crm system where you could go ahead and manage further communications with your subscribers. Or you could do like a no reply, you know, no reply type email address, like if you don't want any replies whatsoever. So it is nice that Active Campaign lets you change that out. I'm just gonna use my reply to address. Then we get down to the recipient selection. So who's actually going to receive this email? So we could go ahead and select our list. We could select multiple lists if we want to, or just one list if you want to. And then additionally, you could go ahead and select a segment of the list as well. So if you have list segments created, you could click this option and then you could select what segment you wanna send it to. So maybe I wanna send it to my buyers on both my master contact list and my crazy out marketing list, or my US buyers or really active subscribers, and then it would go to those people, or I could go ahead and create a brand new segment from here as well. And I have a whole other video on creating segments. If you're interested in that, please check out my channel. And one other thing that's nice with Active Campaign, it does tell you how many contacts your email will go to. So if you start clicking here and you select list and you select segments, and you think it's going to 10,000 people, but maybe you set up your segment incorrectly and you notice it's only gonna to go to one person, well, at least Active Campaign gives you a heads up of how many people your email would be going to. So this is nice to go ahead and double check to make sure that you're sending it to as many people as you think you are. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and not send it to a segment. We'll go ahead and turn that off. And then we have the option for scheduling our email as well. So if you want to schedule it, like maybe you wrote the email like at 10 o'clock at night and your open rates aren't very high at 10 o'clock at night. So maybe you wanted to go out nine o'clock the next morning, you could change the delivery date to the next day. Let's put it over here. And then let's say that we wanted to go out at nine. 04 a.m. Because I know that my subscribers are definitely more active in the morning than they are at night. Coming on down here, we have tracking automation. So we have open retracking, which is a great thing to go ahead and turn on. So that way you can see how well your email is doing. You could also go ahead and turn on link tracking as well. So that way you can know if people are clicking on your links, which is another good stat to know. And also if you have site tracking installed on your site, well then turning on link tracking will let you cookie those people so you can track them across your website as well and can provide you with a whole lot more data. 
There's also reply tracking. So track when a contract replies to your email. So let's go ahead and turn that on real quick. So in this case, the reply to address and your message will be changed for this feature to work properly. Your from address will not be changed. Important replies will be forwarded to your original reply to email address or from email address if you did not specify a reply to address. Do you wish to continue? So let's go ahead and turn that on real quick. And so if you're interested in tracking replies, this can definitely be useful. And also you can create automations based off of people that do reply, which could help you do some creative stuff. So maybe you send an email out and you're like, hey, if you reply to this email, I'll send you this free coupon or something like that. And then as soon as somebody replies to the email, then Active Campaign will send them that coupon and you won't have to do anything extra. So you can play with that if you want to. Finally, if you have Google Analytics installed on your website, you can go ahead and turn on Google Analytics tracking. And then Google Analytics can also track when people come to your website through your active campaign emails. So if you have Google Analytics installed on your site, I definitely recommend going ahead and turning this feature on. So that way Google Analytics can track your stuff as well. Finally, there's a campaign archive setting right here and you can have it as public or private. So on public, this means that campaign will actually push this email to like a website and you could share that website with people and they could just read your emails right on that website. However, if you make it private, then this email will not show up on that particular website. So if this is truly a one-off email and you don't want anybody else seeing it, then I would go ahead and make this private. However, if this is like a public email, like you just wrote a brand new blog post and you want everybody to see it, well, in that case, I'd go ahead and check the public block. And in my case, I'm sharing some silly stuff about walking on Mars and I'm gonna go ahead and leave it public. But anyway, let's come back up here. The next step, of course, then would be to go ahead and actually write your email out. So we can come in here to create with email designer or you can hit this drop down menu and go to a text only or an HTML builder if you want to. I'm gonna do the email designer and I have a video all about how to use the email designer. So if you're interested, please check out my YouTube channel, but I'm gonna go ahead and select this template real quick. And then I could go ahead and write my email and all that type of stuff. I'm not gonna do that in this video. We're gonna go ahead and click on next. And then once I'm all ready to send my email, I just go ahead and click on send now. Now it looks like my schedule thing stopped working. So you might wanna double check your schedule to make sure it's doing what you think it's supposed to. So let's come back in here, set it to 9.04. Maybe I didn't click save last time. So then I could go ahead and click on finish and then send. So anyway, that's how you go ahead and do a standard campaign. Now let's go ahead and do a split test campaign real quick. It'll take a little less time because I want to go through every single detail. So let's come to split testing here. And so here we can go ahead and compare multiple emails to test which one works best. We could test email subjects and or from information or email subjects from information and email content. Let's do the whole shebang and click on next right here. Alrighty, so we have our first email right here that we have written up and I could come in here and change my subject line and pre-header and I could change my email design and all the stuff we could do in the standard campaign. So I'm not gonna cover that right now. Then we have the split test settings and decide winner settings and test ratio. So do I want active campaign to go ahead and determine a winner for me or not? Like maybe I just wanna do a split test 50-50 and see you know, what one works best and that's fine. In which case I'd go ahead and leave it on this first option right here, do not determine the winner. However, if I wanna go ahead and do a split test to see which email generates the highest click-through rate, well then I could go ahead and select this option right here. So best click rate. There's also best open rate as well. So I'm trying to get people to click through to my website. So I'm gonna leave best click rate right there. And then I could go ahead and select how long I want this test to run. And right now it's set at two days. So this would send my split test emails to a segment of people. And after two days, depending on which email generated the highest click through rate, but well then active campaign would send that variant to the rest of the people. So let's go ahead and set up another variant because that'll unlock some more options right here. So come back up here. So I have my first email option right here. And let's go ahead and add a test. So we'll click the plus button. So here's test two. And so depending on what you want to go ahead and split test, maybe you want to split test your subject line or your pre-header, your from name or so on. So maybe I want to try it without the first name in there. Maybe that would give me a higher click through rate. And maybe instead of a frowny face emoji, I want to go ahead and do a heart smiley face emoji. And maybe instead of saying Nathan crazy on marketing, I'm just going to say Nathan. So I'm going to change those two things. And then I'd come in here and I could go ahead and edit my email content as well. And maybe I write new content or change things up. Maybe I include a picture, you know, whatever it is that you may want to try different from your first email. Now I could also switch between the two emails if I want to up here. So I could see which one's which, or I could also add another variation as well if I wanted to. So you can have multiple variations in your split test. It doesn't just have to be an AB split test. You can have ABCD split test and so on. Now it's not loading for some reason, but I'm going to go ahead and click on save and exit. Alrighty. So let's scroll back down to these split test settings. So here we go. So best click through rate after two days. So test one, we send a 10% of our audience. Test two, we send a 10% of our audience. Then the remaining 80% of our list would receive the winning email 
based off of who generated the highest click-through rate after a two-day period. And so that's one thing to address real quick. This is a two-day period. So if I sent this email out Monday, 10% of my list would get test one, 10% would get test two, and then the remaining 80% of my list would not get the email until Wednesday after the conclusion of the split test. So if this is a timely email and you don't wanna wait two days to send it to 80% of your list, you can go ahead and change the time frame right here. So maybe we wanna just do hours. Maybe we only can run the test for four hours before we send it to the remaining 80% of our list. In which case you can go ahead and just set it for four hours. Additionally, if you wanted to send it to like 20% of your list and 20% of your list, you could go ahead and do that as well. And Active Campaign would automatically adjust the winner percent based off of your test ratios. And then we have recipient selection, which we've talked about. We have scheduling and tracking automations and all that stuff that we've already discussed. And so really the only difference is the split test settings within the campaign builder here and also the ability to add the split test by going across the top. And once you're all ready and everything, you would just, just come up here to finish and you could go ahead and send your campaign when you're ready for it to go out. And that is pretty much it for these two campaign types. Again, these other campaign options like automated RSS triggered, autoresponder, and date based can all be built within the automation section of Active Campaign. And that's where I prefer to build all my automated type stuff. So, more videos on that. If you're interested, please check out my YouTube channel. Other than that, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate it. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and/or check out crazyoutmarketing.com. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.